So Kaiju number eight is the new anime on the block and it's pretty good. There's a lot of big anime airing this season so this one might have gone under the radar for some especially because it starts a bit slow but after a couple of episodes in it gets better and better and after finishing it I can say that I thought it was a pretty enjoyable show. As it is a pretty new anime and manga it certainly wears its shonen influences on its sleeve which is always something I find pretty cool if it's done in an original way and I think Kaiju number no. 8 does that. Just like Deku, Kafka is a very weak person who one day gets the ability to become the strongest. It kind of takes a lot of the strongest aspects of my hero, like having the strongest power, but having to keep it a secret by, for example, only using the power on a certain part of the body. Now, this might not be directly inspired by my hero, as my hero itself is inspired by a lot of things and uses a lot of common formulas, but that was the show I found it to have the most similarities with. A lot of things in this show works really well for the same reasons they work in My Hero Academia. When Deku uses the one 100% smash against Nomu, that is an exciting moment because there is a huge amount of risk involved, but also a lot of reward. He risks showing his classmates and the villains that he has All Might's quirk, he also risks destroying his hand. The reward is that he saves Eraserhead, Asui, and Mineta. Kafka goes through the exact same. When choosing to save Ichikawa, the risk is to expose himself as a kaiju to Hoshina and potentially the rest of the military, and the reward is of course to save Ichikawa. And this is why I think the strongest aspect of the show for me is is so far. Kafka trying his best to help his comrades while having to hide the fact that he's a kaiju. It creates a lot of complex situations where Kafka has to decide whether or not he should help or keep his identity hidden. To reduce the risk, Deku uses the power only in his fingers. This also damages his body less, but also makes the reward smaller as his strength is decreased. Just like this, Kafka transforms only his legs to save people just in time. But there's still risks there as people can see his supernatural athleticism, but not as much as fully transforming. And the similarities don't end there, like the way the main character is kind of a nerd and uses that knowledge in the situations he's in. This means that he doesn't use his kaiju form a lot and has to fight the best he can as a regular human. And he does this by utilizing the unique strength he has that the others in the squad doesn't. He knows more than anyone about how kaijus work because he used to dispose and clean kaiju corpses for a living. He actually has to use his brain and think to keep up with the others and that that's what I think makes the show and Kafka interesting. And of course, the most obvious one, the way the main character is told they can't make it and aren't good enough, but tries anyway and never gives up. One of my favorite moments is when his combat power hits 0.01%, showing that there is always a chance, no matter how small it might be. It's a very inspiring message that I enjoyed. It also reminds me of All Might telling Deku he can become a hero. There's a lot of differences between these two moments, but they use a lot of the same themes. Kafka is a really relatable protagonist and just someone you want to see win. Even the other characters in the show root for him. He has zero haters. That's just how likable he is. Although not all characters are as interesting as Kafka, a lot of the side characters are a bit bland and uninteresting so far, especially in their character design. A lot of them just look like generic anime character number five, and it's the same with their personality. But there certainly are some exceptions. For example, Hoshina. He was a character that I didn't think much of originally, but the more we got to see him, him and how he acted as the leader of the platoon, I realized how much more of a complex character he was. When he showed up to fight Kafka, I genuinely got excited and added to the risk factor of using the kaiju form. Seeing him be reliable and able to protect his platoon but not being perfect was pretty refreshing. All of his conversations with Kafka are really interesting and I feel like we just get to know more and more about him the more we see him. We haven't seen too much of Mina yet and I think that's a good thing as she still feels kind of under reachable until Kafka can get stronger. She feels like a clear goal that we can reach. But the scenes we do get of her makes me really curious as to exactly what type of character she is. Because there's definitely an air of mystery surrounding her. Kafka and her were apparently childhood friends, but they just stopped being in contact for some reason. We also have the most telling scene that there might be something to her that's not shown yet when she continues to fire the cannon at the giant kaiju even when it's already down. In general, I get the sense that 
said, this is a pretty thought out story and I hope that this continues to be the case. I also really loved episode 10. It had a lot of great moments from Hoshina and a lot of great action scenes with a lot of stakes and just everyone teaming together. It also revealed Kafka's secret, which happened way earlier in the story than I thought it would. And this moment is genuinely really, really good with some great payoff from the episodes before. I didn't really like the directing and the part where Kafka pushes the bomb back, but outside of that, it was great. There isn't many big criticisms I can give the show as there's nothing it's really doing that's terrible or offensive. The only thing I can really think of is that the world building kind of sucks. Like I have no idea where the kaiju come from or how we're supposed to beat them all, which is like our main goal. Do they have like a home base or something? Because every time they show up, it's completely out of nowhere and everyone's surprised. The first episode starts with a giant kaiju completely wrecking the city like them. It's just, just a regular occurrence to y'all. And do we have a plan to exterminate the kaijus or take out the humanoid kaijus? It's also very unclear how power levels work and how you get stronger. Like what exactly is it that makes Kikoru so much stronger than the others? Don't they all use the same guns? What does the suit have to do with that? And how do you even get stronger? Ichikawa keeps getting stronger, but this dude can't? Why? This is something I feel like is pretty normal in the beginning of shonen anime like this, so I'm pretty sure that these are all questions that will be answered sooner than later. But it does leave a feeling of aimlessness and makes it more difficult to fully invest in the show. I'm also not a huge fan of the music. It's not bad at all, but maybe not very fitting for the tone. For a show about the military fighting giant monsters, I'd expect it to maybe be a bit more epic and grand, especially during the Kafka vs. Hoshina fight. Wouldn't it be cooler if the music was something like this instead? I know I've compared the show to My Hero Academia a lot in this video, but I feel like Yuki Hayashi would have done a really good job with the soundtrack of this. And again, it being similar to My Hero Academia is not a bad thing. But still, it sets itself apart from My Hero by having it be more military focused and almost gets more of an Attack on Titan feel. All in all, I'm pretty excited about the future of this show and it's kind of a shame that it's only 12 episodes. I think a full season could have really helped gain more hype for this show as I think it deserves it. So yeah, that's pretty much it. If you want to hear me talk more about my hero or something else make sure to check out one of these videos